reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. Greetings, friends, and welcome to episode two of the Game Diplomat Podcast, a bite-sized show about great games you might have missed. I'm your host, Josh Augustine, and today I want to tell you how I murdered everybody on a yacht. Wait, no, uh, how I unleashed zombies on a Miami beach party. I, I, I mean, how I danced on a bear and swam in a fancy casino pool. Oh, I sound like a psychopath, don't I? I swear, it's all just silly fun. And that's the tricky thing with Party Hard. It's a goofy, funny, dark humor game about a 90s horror movie style villain that hates people that have loud parties and just decides to end them forever. It's a top-down, retro-looking 8-bit stealth puzzle game. It was developed by Pinocchio Games, published by Tiny Build, and released on Steam in August of 2015. It also came out on consoles earlier this year and may come to mobile in the future. So here's how it works. Each level is basically a big puzzle you have to solve. But... Those puzzles are actually parties at at exotic locations filled with tons of people and wacky traps. And you always solve the puzzles by finding a way to kill everyone without getting arrested. I know it sounds creepy, but you gotta bear with me. Just listen to the whole episode. I promise (laughs) it's not as bad as it sounds at first. The game tells a story through 19 levels, and each of those levels is filled with randomized elements. So sometimes there's a drug deal going down in the back room, which you can exploit, right, to make them start shooting each other and bringing the cops, which busts a bunch of people at the party and creates chaos. And sometimes, you know, there's a dancing bear hanging out by the barbecue. Don't ask why. It's a crazy party that's going on till 3 a.m. to drive their neighbors crazy and turn them into psychotic killers. Of course there's a dancing bear. But the core gameplay is always the same. There's always tons of clever, imaginative ways to take out the partygoers and avoid detection. So a lot of your success is about figuring out efficient routes and shortcuts to sneak around the level. You can climb over walls, sneak through trap doors, crawl through windows. That'll let you kind of avoid bouncers, ditch cops, sometimes quickly distance yourself from the scene of the crime. But you can only use each shortcut once to avoid the cops, and then a Mario lookalike construction worker shows up to close off that route forever like a total jerk. But I guess he's helping stop a killer, so maybe I'm the jerk? Oh no. (laughs) So your character can also directly kill people with his knife. He's the jerk. It's official. But that's likely to get you caught unless you've successfully isolated your target, right? So you sneak around the party, find ways to isolate people, take them out, and then either hide the body or distance yourself from it before it's discovered. Which is often really hard to do because the parties are in open and crowded areas. So that's where the stealth strategy part comes in. First time you play a level, you just kind of bounce around it, trying to pull all the switches and using all the items just to see what happens. Right? You see, oh, pressing this button causes the garage door to open. Oh, kicking this bowl causes it to charge across the lawn and gore everyone it runs into. Oh, using this phone calls in an alien abduction. (laughs) See, I told you it was goofy. And as you're playing with all the tools and figuring out what tricks you have at your disposal this time you're playing through the level, you're also analyzing the layout, right? You're saying, okay, this is a major choke point that I can use to lure people into traps. Oh, but there's a a big burly bouncer over here, and it'll just take me out if I get close. So how am I going to deal with that? Oh, here's a secret doorway that pops me out near the pool behind the bouncer, and I can find a way to get around it that way. So once you have all the pieces, you start to solve the puzzle and figuring out the way to do it. Because there's not just one way, right? There's tons of people and tons of things you need to do on this map. So there's tons of different solutions. So you're figuring out the way you want to do it. And then as things happen during the level, because it certainly doesn't go according to plan every time. You have to improvise and figure out on your toes as things are going, how are you going to solve this problem? How are you going to solve this problem? So then as you progress through the levels, you get put in exponentially more dangerous situations that require a lot of forethought and a lot of failed attempts to solve them, right? Even simple levels require a lot of patience, because if you get arrested, you have to start over from the beginning. And there are at least 60 or more people on almost all these levels, constantly swarming, partying around, moving to different areas, going to make out in the corner, going to get more punch, going outside for a smoke. They're constantly moving. You have to figure it out. If you get impatient near the end, which is really easy to do, because when there's only like five people left, but they all insist on standing on the same dance floor and you have to somehow get them (laughs) apart, it's very tempting to get reckless and take some risks, and you will regret that, and then have to start over like I have many, many times. (laughs) And every now and then that can get kind of annoying. I will admit, I've had to kind of take breaks from the game every now and then when I've failed a certain level, you know, five, six times in a row. Uh, But it's still fun to go back and and play, and I like that the game forces you to be clever and patient and, and crafty. 
So that's the core gameplay of Party Hard. Hopefully it gives you a good idea of just what it's like to play the game. Now I want to jump into the next segment, which is about some very specific reasons I think you should play it right now. All right, let's talk about seven reasons why you should play Party Hard right now. Number one, the most important one, it's not as creepy as you think. It's actually pretty lighthearted, right? It's so goofy that it never felt weird or disturbing in a way that it certainly could have with its really dark premise. You know, things like UFO abductions, dancing pandas, the cheesy zombie attacks. I mean, everyone at the party is like a ridiculous character, right? There's one that looks like Ronald McDonald, Hulk Hogan, Grizzly Bikers, Frat Girls and Frat Boys. And the 8-bit art style, I think, is actually really important and kind of top-down. So you're looking at it like an RTS game, like you would. And everything is kind of moving around in these little cutesy 8-bits. It just keeps it really silly and lighthearted, and it's not graphic, right? You're not seeing intestines or anything spill out. Just like, well, a little splat of, you know, a, cu a couple cubes of red. Uh, it's more scary movie than Saw, if we were going to compare it to horror movies, right? It's a parody. It's not really trying to scare you or be gross. Reason number two. Twitch chat integration. So I, while you stream this game, if you stream on Twitch at all, viewers can vote in chat to cause things to happen in game. It's pretty cool. So a little pop up will show up in the game and like prompt them, hey, type in this to make a bear spawn or type this to make it not spawn and they can vote or type this to call in a SWAT team or create a sharknado that goes across the beach in the Miami level and spits sharks out onto the ground that'll eat people if you get too close to it. Number three, there's a level editor. So I'm still working my way through the campaign, so I haven't tried out any of the custom maps, but I just kind of looked through the Steam Workshop. You can see the ones that players have made. And there's a lot of cool options there. I think it will keep the game interesting for a lot longer. Number four, you can set up elaborate frame jobs. I want you to get it. This game is a legit stealth puzzle game with some really cool features in it. That's really what's appealing about it. Like when an AI character spots a corpse, right, or they spot an explosion or something, They'll try to figure out what happened based on what they can see right then, and, the, and they may react differently to it. Like someone may spot the problem and run away. Someone else may blame someone nearby. If they see someone nearby, be like, oh, it's instantly them. I'm going to call the cops and get them. Or they may get paranoid and back up and just fight anyone that gets close to them for a while. Their health bar starts flashing red. It's just this warning, like, <laughs> they're going crazy. Just give them some time. So there's a lot of really cool opportunities where if you set up the situation just right and plan all the variables and line things up, you can trick people into fighting each other or get people arrested, which is really useful when you can't go near someone like bouncers or people that are really angry, right? You can try and set them up and get the cops to deal with them for you. Reason number five, each level has dynamic events. So there's so much to do and you're constantly given feedback and recognition for those choices. This is the thing I love probably most about the game. The levels just feel so alive. Like in the casino level that I played, and these events don't always happen, but they can happen. Um, the vault room got robbed by a gang. A van pulled up outside, <laughs> like these robbers jumped out and they go inside and they beat up the guard. And they start looting the money and they loot the money for a long time. You know, bills flying everywhere and they're wearing the full black ski mask. Looks really goofy. And they toss the money. Eventually they'll get in their van and drive away. But you have a choice, right? I could go in there and try and intervene to protect the guard. And then the guard will stay alive, the crooks get a, or get taken out, all that sort of stuff. Or I could wait for the crooks to take out the guard, then go in and steal from them. Or I could just leave them alone and let them do their thing. And each choice I make leave, has different impacts on the level and what's kind of available to me. For example, like if you go in and take out the crooks and leave, they drop an item. And so you can get like spare clothes or a smoke grenade. And, and so like the spare clothes is really cool because that's something that... If you get caught doing something, when you're out of line of sight of everyone, you can use that and suddenly all aggro essentially drops. And so if the cops are chasing for you, they'll stop chasing you because you look like someone else. And it turns you into like a disco dude or something like that. It's really funny. Um, and sometimes the events are just goofy, right? It's not all bank robberies. Like in the barbecue party, a knight rides by on a horse occasionally on the bottom of the bottom of the map is like a road where the cars pull up the ambulances or the cop cars or whatever. And every now and then a knight on a horse just rides by really fast. It was really weird at first. I couldn't figure out what's going on. And then occasionally a knight on the other side would come out and they just joust each other and one would win. And as far as I could tell, it doesn't do anything. It just makes the levels kind of fun and fun to watch, I guess. So each time I load into a new map, I just spend a few minutes playing around with all the toys. What happens if I go through the trap door? Why is that bear wearing gold necklaces and dancing on a table? You know, some questions are never answered, <laughs> but it's still fun to go around and explore the levels. 
All right, reason number six, there are multiple characters, and each of them has a special ability or like unique thing they can do to play the level totally differently, like the ninja, for example. He has a sweet sword and can throw smoke grenades. Awesome, but people will immediately call the cops if they see him at all. So you have to hide in the shadows and really work differently. So you have more tools, um, but you have to tackle the level totally differently. I think there's like five or six different characters you can unlock and play through. Um, but I won't tell you them all because that's actually going to be our trivia question for this week. So we'll talk more about them down there. Reason number seven. If nothing else, we have to agree that Party Hard is unique, right? You, you haven't played a game like this before. The premise is dark comedy mixed with this really cheesy horror movie parody vibe. Uh, the stealth strategy is really fresh and interesting. The world feels more alive and malleable than most RPGs I've played. I've laughed plenty of times playing this game. And not a creepy laugh, not like an evil villain laugh, but genuinely like the knights hitting each other and jousting and one going flying. It's just really surprising and fun. And I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe like this game makes me a terrible person. But I think you might enjoy Party Hard 2 if you give it a chance. So if it sounds fun, you can buy it for $13. There's links to all the stores on GameDiplomat.com along with everything else we talked here, plus a video of me playing the game so you can check it out before you buy, see what it looks like. I think it's like an hour long. It's from, I made the video about six months ago. So some, some of the stuff may be a little outdated because there have been lots of updates to the game, uh, but you'll get the gist of the game. Or even better than buying the game, you can get it for free right now. What? Just answer this trivia question about the game. Tiny Build, uh, the publisher of the game, sent us three Steam keys to give away, which was really nice of them, so thank you to Tiny Build. And you can win one by answering this trivia question. Which of these is not an unlockable character to play in Party Hard? A policeman who can carry bodies without causing suspicion. A ninja who throws smoke grenades. A vampire who enthralls people to do his bidding. An angry girl who can knock people unconscious. Or a butcher who cuts up people with a chainsaw. Email or tweet your answer to me. Links for all that on GameDiplomat.com. Just be sure to do it before the next episode, and I'll pick uh, three random winners to get the full game on Steam for free, which is awesome. And speaking of winners, let's talk about last week's winners. So the question was, which equipment in Guild of Dungeoneering added the most stupidity cards to your deck? And the answer was, surprisingly, the male coif, not the troll femur, which I think most people guessed. So congratulations to Healer, the only person to answer correctly. Um, so he's going to win a copy, but Versus Evil actually sent us two codes to give away. Thank you to them. So I chose a second winner from the other three people who sent in responses, which, if you can do math, only four people sent in responses. So they had really good odds of winning. So if you want a copy of Party Hard, you have a really good chance of winning if you just respond. So congratulations to Healer and Dave for each winning a copy of Guild of Dungeoneering Deluxe Edition on Steam. It's a really cool card game dungeon crawling hybrid that you can hear more about on episode one of this show. So if you enjoyed the show, you can leave a review on iTunes, send feedback to me, or suggest a game we should check out, or hey, join our Slack channel and Steam group and talk with us directly. So you can find links for all that, plus how to donate to the show on GameDiplomat.com. But no matter what, thanks for spending your time with us. I really hope you found a fun new game to play. And in the next episode of Game Diplomat, we're going to talk about Darkest Dungeon, a gloriously difficult roguelike dungeon crawler. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching the video, everybody. Don't forget to check out all the other podcasts at mmoreporter.com or by clicking on any of the links here. And please check out our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash mmoreporter. Thanks, everyone, and see you in game.